Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the hurdles and barriers that sometimes prevent us from using and enjoying our luxury handbags. So this video is specifically for luxury handbag lovers such as myself, and this topic was inspired by one of you. So one of you left me a comment recently on one of my previous videos stating that you have a handbag collection that you really like, but you're afraid to take them out and use them. You're afraid to actually wear your handbags. So I thought this would be an interesting topic to cover and perhaps many of you feel the same way as the one who commented. And I have to be frank with you, there are times when I feel also hesitant to use some of my bags. So here are the three least used handbags in my collection at the moment. I actually featured all three of these bags in a recent video titled Most Used and Least Used Handbags of 2021. It got a lot of views, a lot of interest. So if you missed it, I will link it up above. So this one here is my Hermes Birkin. 30 size and it's in the gold togo leather with the palladium hardware then in the center here is my lady dior and it's in the small size it's got the matte blush color with the champagne gold hardware and then this one here is my chanel jumbo single flap and it's in the black caviar with the silver hardware so just want to give you close-ups of those and i just want to say that I have really thought about this and I've really started to kind of uh, examine what stops us from using and enjoying not just luxury handbags, but the items that we really sort of uh, cherish. Not that these things are that important, let's be honest, they're all material items, but the reality is that for us, luxury handbags are luxuries, they're not necessities. That means that we use our hard-earned money to make these purchases, and we all know that they're not cheap. So we do cherish them, and we want to take good care of them, because they're not just like, you know, anything we picked up off the street. It's something that we likely worked hard for, or we wanted to save up for, or it took us a while to get, right? And Or maybe they were gifts, and for that reason, they're extra special to you. So I really started to dissect and sort of examine this topic and I realized that the reasons and I came up with five probably core reasons that I could think of as to what might be holding us back. But all those five reasons are rooted in fear and I'll explain, but they're all clearly rooted in fear. And so I want to break them down one by one. And then I hopefully will be able to sort of like break that fear apart so that you and I can just enjoy what we have, enjoy and appreciate what we have. Okay. So the first thing is around safety. I have gotten a lot of comments over the years on my channel asking me if I feel safe wearing my luxury handbags when I'm out and about specifically because I live here in Manhattan and, you know, walk around in the streets. There's a lot of walking. I might jump into a taxi or an uber but for the most part i am walking a lot um, there's also the subway and the bus so i've answered this question time and time again and for the most part 99 percent of the time i'm basically saying i'm not really scared because i don't feel unsafe and maybe because i live here and because i'm a native new yorker i just i know my surroundings i know which neighborhoods i feel safe in and which ones i don't and so i know what to avoid i am also very alert um, and I know what hours I'm comfortable, you know, out and about by myself. So I'm not going to go on the subway on the worst train. <laughs> there are certain lines, for example, that I wouldn't take uh, certain trains at, you know, 12 o'clock at night by myself wearing my Birkin. I'm not going to do that because it's not smart. Okay. But am I comfortable walking around shopping on Fifth Avenue? I'm um, going out to lunch with my friend, um, you know, doing my regular sort of stuff over the weekends in broad daylight. Yes. Okay. Uh, the reality is that we are not hundred percent safe anywhere. You can be in the safest neighborhood, right? And you could be wearing the most plain Jane outfit but you're still not safe because unfortunately the world is unpredictable and there are some creeps out there. So it's not just your handbag. If you're wearing a nice watch or jewelry, right? Or even shoes, you can be targeted. So if you really want to kind of go down that rabbit hole of fear, technically you would just wear sweatpants all day and some flip flops to just completely not get any kind of attention or maybe you'll get different kind of attention. Um, so I think absolutely safety is so important and we don't want to put ourselves at risk for handbags. 
Um, so that's why I think you just really need to think about the neighborhoods, the time of day, things like that, who you're with. You know, if you're by yourself, of course, you have to be more careful. Um, but generally, no, I don't feel unsafe. And I don't think that you should feel unsafe wearing most of your items. And if you do genuinely feel unsafe, then maybe you want to reconsider if these items kind of make sense for you in your current environment, because it's kind of a shame to pay for something like this and then store them in the back of your closet and just have them collect dust for you years right okay then after safety is number two size so it's interesting because i you know i said everything that i'm going to be talking about is rooted in fear and you might be wondering okay so safety yes comes from fear safety concerns but size like how is size related to fear and i thought about this so when i talk about how the birkin 30 and the jumbo in particular these two bags are kind of big for me I realize, like, yeah, from a function standpoint, they're they're bigger than I need. Like, I don't carry a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm kind of a minimalist in terms of what I tend to carry with me. So half the bag would be empty. But that's really not what's stopping me. It's the fact that they're big and noticeable. Okay? They're, like, big and easy to spot. Like, this on the crook of my arm is a big bag. Maybe for not all of you, but for me, it feels like a big bag. The jumbo on my frame it feels like a big bag. So it kind of like stands out, kind of pops. And so, you know, who cares if the bag is half empty or full or whatever? That's really not the real reason. That could be a little bit of it, but the real, real reason is the large size of it is making us feel like, I don't know, just too noticed. And at the end of it, that speaks to how much we care about what other people think or what other people might see of us. So that is a fear. It's perception fear, right? You know, we want to uh, kind of blend in, but we want to stand out just a little bit, but not too much. You know, it's like, and it's all sort of like externally perception driven. So at the end of the day, unless it's about function, meaning like the bag is just too big for you to carry because it overtakes you or it's too heavy for you to withstand and it hurts your arm or it's too small because your phone doesn't fit and so it doesn't work for you. Those things are like practicality type reasons. So those are legitimate. But if it's just purely like, oh, it's big, mm, it's probably the case as it is with me that big meaning mm, everyone's going to see it. So let's try to dissect that on our own and figure out like, why do we care that other people are going to see that our bags are big? <laughs> then we go on to barrier number three, which is style. So I don't know about you guys, but for example, the Lady Dior is such a ladylike bag, even the name, right? And it really kind of um, conjures up the image of Princess Diana, the late Princess Diana for me. And, you know, she was a princess, right? She was married to a prince. So uh, there's just like, I don't know, there's definitely this sort of image that comes with this bag and with other bags too some of you might consider like the chanel classic flap as you know uh very sort of formal or very fancy or, or what have you right and others might think of it as a casual bag but for those of us who see some of these bags as you know a little bit more um formal or ladylike that could be a barrier because this one for me aside from it having some annoying aspects which i talk about in another video that i titled love hate relationship with my dior um I do have a kind of a unique relationship with this bag because I think it's absolutely beautiful, but the design elements are a little bit annoying, but I won't get into it here. So here's my thing. I, in the beginning when I got this bag, I thought to myself, oh, I have to dress like pretty ladylike to match the bag. You know, I better wear high heels and a dress or a long skirt and put my hair in a nice, you know, style and sort of like dress up to meet the expectations of this bag. And I realized very quickly how silly that is. How silly that is. The bag didn't buy me. I bought the bag. I own the bag, okay? You own these things. So you own them the way you want to own them. So basically, I've been wearing this bag with jeans, just crossbody. I've been wearing them with like tank tops. Over the summer, I wore like this white tank top. I think I posted a photo of it on my Instagram. Um, I can wear this with shorts. Like you make this what it is. And this is also a slightly more updated version. The strap is inside here. It's got that really sort of wide uh, band, which makes it feel a little bit more playful and modern so it's not as dressy but even if I were to just hold it top handle with some cute jeans and a t-shirt like it could work so I don't think we should shy away from you know styling these bags the way we want to style them just making them our own because we own them okay so I just wanted to make that point so that's point number three and that also is you know rooted in fear like oh 
you know, it doesn't look right, does it? If I wear jeans with the Lady Dior, like what are people going to think? Who cares? Who cares? As long as we feel comfortable and we like it because they're ours to be used. Okay. Then fourth point is the self-conscious factor. You know, sometimes we all feel this way where we're wearing something nice. doesn't have to be a handbag. It can be anything. It could be like a beautiful dress, you know, some fabulous shoes or, you know, gorgeous sparkly earrings or whatever. And you think, oh my gosh, people are going to wonder like, who does she think she is all dressed up like that? Why is she so overdressed? Or why is she trying so hard? Or Again, we are fearful of what other people think of us. And it's usually people that we don't even know, people that we don't even care about, people that if they decided to move halfway across the country tomorrow, we would never find out because they're not even part of our lives. So why do we even, you know, get ourselves worked up about this stuff, right? Like I have had those moments where I pause and go, I don't know, this is kind of a casual get together. Do I really want to wear this bag? And my answer is yes, because I think the bag looks great with my outfit and it pulls it all together and I feel good about myself. But I hesitate because I'm like, what if I'm the only one that's actually wearing like a Chanel bag? Am I going to look stupid? What does it matter? People, you know, they will judge you regardless of who you are, what you wear, what you do, and hopefully you get to be friends with those who will judge you for your character, right? And not for the things that you choose to put on your body and wear. So that's really, you know, point four that I wanted to emphasize. And then the last one, and I just noticed they're all S's, like safety, size, style, self-conscious, and the fifth one is smitten. When you're smitten with something, when you're smitten, like too smitten with something, okay? So for example, I talked about this in my recent video where I covered my 20 year life and luxury journey and I showed the handbags that I purchased from 2001 all the way to 2021, two decade story that I shared with you guys. I told you that this bag, I wanted it for like at least a decade. I think I wanted it for 15 years before I finally took the leap and I got it because I was going through various life stages and it just wasn't my priority at the time when I first tried it on. And then you guys, if you watch the video, you know what I mean. So definitely when I got this bag, it was like, ah, you know, and it just felt like a moment. It felt like I had arrived at something. I don't know what that means, but it just felt like something, you know, like a milestone. And there was a risk, to be honest, of me like overly uh, putting too much value too much value on this bag because at the end of the day it's just another bag it's another bag it's a bag that i wanted and i finally got it and that's it it's a bag bags are meant to hold things so we can carry them around that's what it is they're supposed to be practical and functional so i remember when i first started using the bag i was like good because i needed to sort of like break that barrier and just start using it so that i could remind myself that it's meant to be used and over the years it will get worn and it will get beat up and that's okay and that means that i loved it and i actually appreciated it and it got you know, to live out its purpose, which is to be used as a handbag. So what I mean is when you're smitten with something, when you're too smitten with something, like overly smitten, there is a risk that you're so fearful of using it because you don't want to ruin it. You don't want it to age. You don't want it to get scratched. You don't want it to get worn. And what is that? That is just like the ultimate of silly because you worked hard for it. You used your hard-earned money to buy it. You finally have it. And then you're afraid to use it because you're afraid it's going to be used. Like <laughs> logically, it doesn't make sense in any which way, right? Of course, emotionally and psychologically in those moments, you're like, oh no, no, something just blocks you. But if you really rationally think it through and examine it the way we're examining it right now, it doesn't make sense. It's just purely irrational fear that is driving all of this. So... My message to all of you and also to myself is to just use what you love. Use what you love. And if you no longer love it, let it go. You guys know if you're regulars here, I have let go of many items and I always feel good. I always feel free and light. You know, I feel happy knowing that someone else is going to get use out of them. And this is whether I sell them, whether I give them to my mom or my sister, whether I donate them. Just sort of letting them go is such a kind of cathartic feeling versus hoarding out of fear that what if I want it one day? What if I what if I, 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 I miss it? You know, the fear is never really healthy for us, especially if it's, you know, irrational fear like we're talking about. So I say use what you love. OK, you worked hard for it. You only live once. I know that's very cliche, but that's the reality. We only live once. And when we say we're going to save a bag for a special occasion, the reality is every day is special. Every breath we take is special. We don't know what's going to happen. Life is so, so unpredictable. We're not guaranteed our next day, right? So of course, there are going to be certain bags that don't make sense 
to wear on certain days because they're more formal or you know they're just meant for certain outfits of course there are those bags that are reserved for that that's normal but for the most part you want to get them into rotation you want to be regularly using them as much as possible you want to get the best use out of them and you just want to enjoy enjoy them appreciate and enjoy them there also is the reality of the uh, cost per wear and we talk about this sometimes in previous videos it's just like a mathematical way of looking at it if you pay a certain amount of money for an item a handbag let's say and you only use it three times a year the cost per wear on that sucks okay meaning you basically are paying a lot of money for it every day to pay off technically you know this is all theoretical because we're doing calculations in hindsight you already purchased it but theoretically you're paying a lot of money every day to work out this bag versus if you wear it a lot and you spread it across many 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 days throughout the years it's like you paid a penny a day for the bag. I have bags like this I talked about in my 20 year journey video. There are some bags that I used so, so much, like every day practically for every occasion for like five years straight. So the cost per wear on those bags was probably a penny or less per day if you really think about it. So if you wanna think about it from a sort of logical, rational, mathematical perspective, if that's how your mind works, think about it like that. Just do the math on the actual dollars that you paid for the bag. Otherwise, just think about how you don't wanna live your life rooted in fear, especially when it comes to this stuff. This stuff is supposed to be fun frivolous silly extra luxury not necessities at all you know this is for people who are already comfortable with you you know you have shelter you have food to eat you're not thinking about your you know tomorrow's next meal and you're comfortable let's admit it we're comfortable enough to think about this stuff so why not let ourselves kind of relax into it and just enjoy enjoy what you have Okay, that's the whole point of having these, right? So hopefully this video was helpful and it kind of broke down some of your barriers. I am committing to myself that these three bags are definitely gonna be more used in 2022. In fact, I've got a dinner date soon. It's my husband's birthday also, so we're going out to dinner then. We've got a Valentine's Day dinner coming up, so literally those are three occasions where I'm gonna cycle through these bags. I'm gonna just pick among only these three bags, make sure I start using them early on in 2022, and then hopefully get them into the rotation this year. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.